So this video is going to go over specifically different parts of the heating curve of water, more in a conceptual understanding and also particle pictures, particle pictures. So I would suggest you pause the video uh, multiple times uh, so that you can uh, write down the notes because I'm going to go through it relatively quickly. So this is the heating curve of water. We know that water has a freezing point of zero degrees Celsius. We know it has a boiling point of around 100 degrees Celsius. So this is temperature, this is heat. As you go from left to right, you are adding heat. As you're going from right to left, you're taking heat away. So I've labeled each part of the heating curve uh, with Roman numerals from one to five. So again, pause the video if you need to take down more notes, more notes. All right, so I would like you to make kind of a table um, underneath this, and we're going to label or essentially uh, describe uh, each part of this curve. So Roman numeral one, what we're gonna look at is what's happening to temperature, what's happening to kinetic energy, KE is a abbreviation for kinetic energy, PE is potential energy. And for our discussion here, it has to do with distance between particles. And then we're gonna draw pictures associated with what's going on with those particles um, as we go through the process. So number one, we are uh, below zero degrees Celsius. So as I go up this positive slope, I will be increasing temperature. Anytime I'm increasing temperature, I'm also increasing kinetic energy. Uh, so those two will uh, increase um, the same way. Potential energy is not changing because I am still at a solid phase. Um, so anything below zero, I'm still a solid. So that means the particles themselves do not change distance. So therefore potential energy is constant, it is constant. So if I were to draw this picture, I would start at negative 20, let's say, and go up to zero. So what I wanna show is at negative 20, I have at least one swishy. Uh, at zero, I then have more swishies, and they are both drawn with a solid configuration. So <clears throat> I am not changing the picture. All I'm doing is changing the number of swishies whenever I change temperature, whenever I change temperature. So that is below zero. Well, what happens at zero? Well, what happens at zero is um, the temperature does not change. It is flat. Uh, so the temperature doesn't change, neither does the kinetic energy. So that remains the same. So what increases or changes is potential energy because I'm going from a solid to a liquid. So I'm essentially separating those particles. So the distance is becoming greater. So my temperature here is still at zero degrees Celsius at the plateau. My swishies do not change. I still have two here, two here, following what I did in the previous picture, but my picture changes. So whenever I'm at a constant temperature, my picture is changing. So I'm changing it from a solid, it's changing to a liquid, and now it becomes all liquid at zero degrees Celsius. So again, these, this is kind of showing you a progression of what is taking place along that um, plateau. Um, as you are not increasing temperature, you are just changing the distance between those particles. Three, again, you have an upward slope. Okay, so an upward slope would mean you have an increase in temperature, increase in kinetic energy. So if I have an upward slope on that heating curve, that is still a liquid. So that is a constant distance between those particles. So it's a liquid state. Yes, they might individually change distance, but for overall, you're going to see the particle picture is going to be exactly the same. The only thing you're gonna show with the upward slope is that you have a change in temperature. If you have a change in temperature, you have to change the number of swishies. So I started with two here, again, going back to my zero degrees Celsius, and then I go up to 100. Again, you could change the number of swishies as long as you are consistent across all of your pictures. Part four is, again, another plateau. Okay, so I'm not changing temperature. So temperature is constant. Kinetic energy is constant. So the only thing that is changing is phase. So I'm going from a liquid to a gas. So what you should see is the picture is changing. So I have a liquid and some gas, and then it goes to all gas. My temperature is still at 100 degrees Celsius, and my swishies are the same. So again, the swishies are always going to agree with the temperature. The picture is going to change if I am changing the phase, if I'm changing the phase. So again, I'm going from a liquid to a gas. And finally, the last part, upward slope again. I have an increase in temperature, therefore the kinetic energy is increasing. 
High distance between particles is not changing, so that is considered constant. So let's say I'm going from 100 degrees to 120 degrees Celsius. So I would have to change the number of swishies. So again, I started with three swishies here for 100 degrees Celsius. So I keep that the same, and then I make this four swishies. And again, it, as long as it is consistent with what you are drawing, it doesn't matter how many swishies you draw, just as long as you have swishies, and you change them when you have a change in temperature. So overall, again, at the plateaus, you are not changing uh, the kinetic energy, you're changing potential energy. So those distance between particles is changing, so your particle picture can change. When you have an upward slope, the temperature is changing, but your picture is staying the same. But the number of swishies goes from one to two to three or whatever it happens to be. So that is how you essentially look at a heating curve according to particle pictures.